The new season is a new occasion for interesting meetings, incredible discoveries, and curious stories. My name is Konstantin Kopsin. I am an ethnographer, turcologist, traveler, full member of the Russian Geographical Society, director of the Museum of Nomadic Culture in Moscow. My name is Tinkai Kritova. I live in Kazakhstan. I study the history and culture of the Great Steppe. The culture of nomads of the Great Steppe is my favorite topic, which I have been researching for many years, and I have something to tell about it. I think that we will hear many new and unexpected facts from you. Welcome to Kazakhstan. Kazakhstan. Akuns of Kazakhstan and Kyrgyzstan occupy a special place among the storytellers of the nomadic world. Only these countries have a real cult of the wandering singer and storyteller. People treat the Akins with even greater reverence than the legendary Batirs of the past. How do they become Akins? It is a gift from above, or can a person learn this ancient art? Tinkai, I know that you communicated with Kazakh Akuns. You know the history of the Akun tradition. Tell me about Kazakh Akuns, please. I think that our steps make people poetic. These open spaces, these beauties, this sky is magnificent. It is impossible not to sing and compose in such places. The steps give rise to a long song and the mountains to a rhythmic one. Yes, Mongolia also has steps, but still in Mongolia, the cult of Genghis Khan surpasses everything, although the Mongols are people who sing. <laughs> It seems to me that the impression that the Akins are wandering has developed from the outside. Because a traditional Kazakh society, Akins is a member of the clan who plays his own music, composes songs specifically for his clan, in order to defend it at Itisis. The word Akin has the meaning attack in such a poetic reflection. Poetic warrior, wrestler. Yes, he is a poetic warrior. It is impossible to imagine Kazakhstan without the Akun, but you can become one only with a certain gift. They say that learning this is impossible. This is Kasiyet, a gift from above. I heard similar things about Akuns of Kyrgyzstan, and you know, probably, this is a common tradition for all Akuns. When I worked in Kyrgyzstan, an old man told me a story about the famous Kyrgyz Akin named Kaligul, and I understood why the cult of Akins in Kyrgyzstan is higher than the cult of Batirs. Although both the Akin and the Batir defended their clans, this Akin was named Kaligul. In that distant era, two Kyrgyz clans, the Bugu clan and the Saribagush clan, began a war of extermination. The war was unsuccessful for the Bugus. They were defeated, and a lot of women and children from the Bugu clan 
clan were captured by the Sari Bagush. The Bugu warriors did not know what to do. There were few of them. They knew that if they tried to recapture the prisoners, all would die and would not save anyone. And then the Bugu Akun Kiligul went alone to the enemy camp. Not entirely alone, but with his three-string komus. Akuns were inviolable at all times. The enemies let him in and Kiligul said, Oh, Sari Bagush. I came to invite your Akins to Aitish. Let's agree, if I win, you will release all the prisoners. If I lose, Kiligul will be your enemy forever. Saribagush lost their courage, and then Kiligul added with a grin. Why are you confused, people of Saribagush? After all, you will be the judges in this contest. And the Aitish began. It lasted three days and three nights non-stop. At the end of the Aitish, blood oozed from all the fingers of Kiligul. His voice no longer sounded like on the first day, but he realized that he was winning. He saw how the warriors of the Sari Bagush lowered their eyes. The women of the Sari Bagush pressed to the chest the captive Bugu children. He defeated the Sari Bagush, faithful to their word, released all the prisoners of the Bugus. So one Akin did what the whole army wasn't able to do. It would be interesting to hear Aitis contest between Akins of different traditions, even from different countries, for example, Kyrgyzstan and Kazakhstan. Интересно было бы услышать айты с состязания между акынами разных традиций, mm -hmm. даже разных стран, например, Кыргызстана и Казахстана. Ey <gülüyor> Dosum ol sağınsın basın. Kırgızdın kalkı baykandar. Kelesi yolu aytışka. Jeniş pegemes ağayın ayalı şıgıp tırmasın. Böyle <gülüyor> bara geldi. Akin's improvisers very often performed a ritual ceremonial function in our tradition. It is a Akin who with the Dombra neck pushes the curtain that hides a young wife who arrived in the village to her husband, thus marking her birth in a new family. Similarly, Akins participated in the ritual of Toy Bastar, Betashar, Shichil Dekhana, when a child turns 40 days old. That is, Akin is the most important element of the Kazakh culture. <laughs> One of my favorite Kazakh Akins is Suyunbai Aronulu. By the way, we are in the lands not far from the places where he was born, lived, and where his museum is now located. He performed epics about Batirs, about Suranshi, and Saurut Batirs, in whose honor villages in the area are named. That is, all this happened here. I will cite a small excerpt from this work translated into Russian. A wolf's head is my dare. My flag has a wolf's head. When the wolf's banner flies, the rebellious spirit owes me. I would say that it was written in the era of the Turkic Khaganate. This is a direct heritage of the Turks. The student of Suyun Bai was Jambul, Jambul Jabayev, the famous Kazakh Akun, a long liver who lived 99 years. He began to perform at the age of 14. He just left home to make money performing songs on a Dombra. He was really a genius Akun. He repeated both Suranshi Batir and Saurut Batir for his teacher 
began thanks to Jambul, we recorded these epics. When the Soviet regime came, Jambul Jabayev, as a real Akun, was able to perform songs dedicated to Stalin, Lenin, the Great October Revolution. That is, the color of time changed, the tradition changed, but he remained an Akun. Yes. Jambul is 90 years old. I have been singing all my life. I'm old and gray. Stalin returned youth to me. Jambul became younger, and I'll sing my best song about Stalin. There are other examples. For instance, Amre Koshabayev was the first of the Soviet Kazakhs throughout the country and far beyond its borders to glorify the Kazakh singing tradition. In Paris, at the Expo exhibition, I guess in 1925, he impressed everyone with the strength and beauty of his voice. We are talking about Akins of the past, about great people who are mentors of their peoples. Are there real Akins in Kazakhstan nowadays? There lives one amazing woman, Asilhan Kalibyakova, in the Otra region, in the village of Shaueldir. She teaches young guys how to play Dombra as well as improvisation. Well, this is amazing. I would like to meet with Asil Khan and get acquainted with her, her art and her students. Can we go visit her? Sure. But I've got a question. What if she calls me to Aitis? You can adequately answer her. After all, you are an icon too. You know, I would like to practice a little in song art. I will not use Kazakh techniques, but Kalmyk ones. Kalmykia also has a vibrant song tradition. There are storytellers, and there is an epic, Jangar Dadar. Kalmyks are the same Jungars who did a lot of evil to the Kazakhs, but now it is completely peaceful people, a people with an ancient culture. When I met with Kalmyk storytellers, they taught me how to play an interesting game called Puzzles Tersets. Let's say I'll make a riddle, three of what is. I will ask you, three of what is red? How, for example, can I answer? The sunset over the boundless steppe is red, the red lips of a beloved girl, the blood of the Batir spilled for the native land is red. There are certain rules of this game. The first line of the answer is always a description of an inanimate object, such as clouds, sunset, steppe, wind in the grass. The second line is a description of an animated nature, a comparison of animals with humans, a description of life, for example, as brave as a leopard, fell like a falcon to pray. And the third line is the answer itself. The first two lead the listener to the third line. This is a philosophical conclusion. In the third line, the narrator talks about what is really important in our short life, about friendship and hatred, about love and betrayal, about what makes us human, about the path of man to God. Let's try to play this game. Okay. I'll make a riddle for you. Three of what is white? The white snow on the peaks of the Tin Shan. The white dress on a young girl. White light shines the history of the nomadic people. Светом сияет история кочевого народа. Oh, well done. Now you make a riddle for me. Three of what is wide? The Kazakh steppe without edge is wide. The yurt of a hospitable man is wide. And the soul of one who loves God and loves people is wide. Three of what is eternal? How, for example, can you answer? Вечный 
The stone on the mounds of our ancestors are eternal. The fire in the eyes of a loved one is eternal like the radiance of stars. The nomad song spread over the steppe is eternal. Oh. oh, well done. Now you make a riddle for me. Tell me, three of what is sky? Hmm, the blue lakes in the Tian Shan mountains are like the sky. The lover's blue eyes are like the sky. But the eternal sky of Tengri itself has a color of sky blue. Listen, the audience will not believe it, but you and I did not prepare for this improvisation. We will practice more during the trip. If there is itis, I will be able to adequately respond to the true akun. Let's go. Armasın Konstantin Kuxinimiz Basından ötüp kettu ıstığımız Welcome, Konstantin Koksin. We are the descendants of the glorious Kairi Khan Batir. How many years we, Kazakhs, were dependent on Russia? We thought, well, that's it. Now we are on our own. But no, Konstantin came and sat next to me. Oh, ancient Otirar, the city of poets and glorious thinkers. Oh, yellow Otirar, a barrow frozen under the heel of the Mongol warrior. Modern, flowering, mighty, beautiful Otirar, where the Apai met me. Constantine, your words have reached their goal. Continue pouring chrism in the same manner. With such a cordial and kind guest, we will continue to be friends. You have a Kazakh yurt, so we will send one of our girls with you. I have had a long journey through mountains, deserts, and rivers, exhausted from thirst on the road. But your songs are sweeter than water from the stream, sweeter than komis, Asilhanapa. Звучат ваши песни, Асилханапа. Рахмет. You are both a scientist and a teacher who has his own students. I also have them, both boys and girls. We will call two of them and see what they are in action. Constantine <laughs> 
Well, hello, Konstantin Kuksin. There is a glory about you around the world. In honor of your arrival today, let poets compose poems. In order not to think that this itis is a deception, let's conduct it as it should be. A pie as a sign of respect for the Russian guest, or maybe as a joke, offers him one of our girls. What a generosity! Maybe we should first think about ourselves. For example, among us, there is a noble bachelor, Daurian Aksakalov. I'm saying to all people that a guest has come from far away in our house. We will give our girl to Konstantin. Our good Apai hastened to promise. And you say, let's first marry Daurian. But you are also a jigit, and it's time for you to get married too. First, find a bride for yourself. Why do you care about others? <laughs> Akins, you are young, beards have not yet pierced your faces, and wisdom is already visible in your eyes. Not only Otirar will be proud of you, but also the capital and, of course, your mentor. How can I get married? Think yourself. Wait. If my elder brother, Daurian, is still single, if I want, then the bride will be found for me easily. You think girls ignore me, huh? Maybe I already have a girlfriend, but I don't announce it at all corners. So don't try to tear a word out of a song. As for the lack of a beard, oh, I just shave it because my elder brother is single. Do you doubt that we are ITIS experts? You've noticed that we do not have a beard, but your head does not have much hair too. It can be said it's almost empty. Do not consider us as meaningless. We ourselves can already become fathers of such cheapers. So, a guy, we do not agree. We will not deceive you. A pie just joked. Kazakh girls need Kazakh jigits, and you, even if you have a beard, we will not give up easily. <laughs> There was a time, a few winters ago, I was also young. Thoughts are all about beautiful girls and their clear eyes. There was no elder brother in the family. The elder had married a long time ago. Yeah. <laughs> 
Not only a girl will not they yield to you, but also an old woman. You've seen our singing step. You've seen these two of my students. Wherever you roam, the world, Constantine, will always be healthy. And may all roads of the universe be open to you. <laughs> There are akins who only write poetry, and there are those who compose them impromptu. So, those who write poetry, they publish their books, and those who playing the dombra create their texts momentarily. They pronounce them and leave. I can't compose both this way and that. Therefore, I have two wings. These are my books. This one is called Jir Shapagat. Jir Shapagat. It is dedicated to my grandfather, Yergaybek Akun, from whom a gift was given to me. And this book is Basindi Tikpia Buk Kaida. And finally, the recent book is a collection of selected works. Appa, you can be proud of your students. I myself am a teacher, and I know that students are the pillars on which the teacher rests. All that we leave are our students. And seeing your students, my heart is filled with joy. Tradition will live on. I love Akuns. I love Akun tradition. I will cite eight lines of poems dedicated to all Akuns. I will tell you about the deserts, about the treasures that are buried in the sand, about countries where honey melons grow. The star is heading towards the zenith. And in the early morning, I will leave to the nomadic distance and forgotten. And the sand runs along the trail, rushing under the hooves. I still cannot forget our trip to Asilhan Kalibyakova. Her students astonished me with their energy. They are happy with what they do. I was astonished by Asilhan herself. Actually, the woman is not young, but what energy she has. Yes, she was kidding me. The students picked up her jokes. I barely fought back. We said that you can't become a kun. It's a gift. Therefore, a mentor is extremely important. A gift comes, and if there is no teacher, this gift may disappear, as a spring in the desert runs out. The fact that Asilhan has disciples is happiness. Happiness for a creative person to convey her knowledge, to teach the boys sparkling humor, to teach them how to play the instrument, to put their voices. When I see that young Akuns are almost in no way inferior to a mentor, for me as a teacher, this is happiness. It is happiness for all of us to be a spectator in such a contest, to empathize. I saw through the eyes of the audience who were involved in this game that it's not just an ITIS on TV. This is a real game, a real battle, as young people now say. And the fact that the Akins have hairs and students tell me that the wheel of the history of the Kazakh people does not stop and moves in the right direction. The sun falls over the peaks of the Tinshan Mountains. The wheel of time rotates again. And I am happy that the Kazakhs, the Kyrgyz, the Mongols have real living Akuns, living guardians of tradition. I am happy that I finally met with Akuns in Kazakhstan. Наконец-то познакомился с Акынами в Казахстане.